What's up, everyone? Welcome back to our reading in Ecclesiastes. Today is chapter 12. It's the last chapter in Ecclesiastes. So let's get, let's get started and let's finish off this book. So remember your Creator in the days of your youth, before the days of adversity come, and the years approach when you will say, I have no delight in them, before the sun and the light are darkened, and the moon and the stars and the clouds return after the rain. On the day when the guardians of the house tremble and the strong men stoop, the women who grind grain cease because they are few, and the ones who watch through the windows see dimly. The doors at the street are shut while the sound of the mill fades, when one rises at the sound of a bird and all the daughters of song grow faint. Also, they are afraid of heights and dangers on the road. The almond tr tree blossoms, the grasshopper loses its spring, and the caper berry has no effect, for the mere mortal is headed to his eternal home, and mourners will walk around in the street before the silver cord is snapped, and the gold bowl is broken, and the jar is shattered at the spring, and the wheel is broken into the well, and the dust returns to the earth as it once was, and the spirit returns to God who gave it. Absolute futility, says the teacher. Everything is futile. And so here in this first eight verses we see that our ability to enjoy this life will fade he uses a lot of metaphors for the, the growing old of a human right and, and so i remember in the beginning here he says remember your creator in the days of your youth start out man don't wait till you get old to, to give your life to christ right don't wait till you get old to start following god do that while you're young and live life to, life to its fullest following God while you're young and you, and you can enjoy it. Because our ability to enjoy this life, this futile, short life, this temporary life here on earth, in light of eternity, right, is going to fade. There's a, there's a short time when you, when you can't enjoy it. Right, and so, um, you know, there's many, he talks about like the guardians, the house trembling, that seems to be like our legs. As you get older, you're not as stable. Right, um, the strong men stoop, the women grind grain, cease because they are few. Um, many commentators and stuff believe it is talking about the teeth. Right, your your ability to, to even to eat, you're gonna have less teeth as you get older. Um, the ones who watch through windows seem dimly. It's like your eyes. You're, you're not even able to, you know, enjoy food, enjoy food as much. Not able to see as well. Um, your your sleep is even restless. Right, when one rises at the sound of a bird. Right, and yet the daughters of song grow faint, and so it's like not able to sleep, and then you're not able to hear as well. Um, it's just it goes on here. Even like the uh, chapter five seems to even be talking about maybe um, virility, your, your ability to enjoy um, that from your youth as well. Um, and then the the silver cord being snapped seems to be talking about like your spinal column and, and your head. Right? And then ultimately, the dust returns to the earth. Ultimately, you're going to die. This life is short. The ability to enjoy it again right, is, is short. Because just as you, you came from the dust, you're going to return from the dust. Just as your spirit came from God, he created you, your spirit's going to go back to him. And so he's saying, life is brief. Remember this futility, this word that's translated there from, from the Hebrew, is it's brief and precious. Right? Everything. Brief and precious. It's like a like a vapor. This is how we opened up this book, and this is how he closes it. Right. So, so take advantage. This life matters. Live well. Enjoy the moment, and walk with God from beginning to end. Live well, and die well. And then we're going to finish off with his last words of wisdom here in nine through twelve. Now it says here, in addition to the teacher being a wise man. He constantly taught the people knowledge. So he was wise, but he didn't just keep it to himself. He was wise, and he understood he needed to share that wisdom with others. Right? Um, and he weighed, explored, and arranged many proverbs. The teacher sought to find delightful sayings and write words of truth accurately. And so th there was a work about this. He, he didn't just blatantly write things out, right? He, he weighed, explored, and arranged them, right? And he did it 
trying to being careful to transmit this truth rightly. Right? Um, the sayings of the wise are like cattle prods. So the sayings of the wise guide us. Right? And those from masters of collections are like firmly embedded nails. They're trustworthy. They're able to hang things on them. They're firm and straight. They bear weight. The sayings are given by one shepherd. And so all of this, this here seems to tell us that, man, Scripture, it's not just the teacher that's giving it to us. It comes from one shepherd. All of, all of the book of Scripture, the Bible, right, is written over three continents by over 40 authors, but it's all one cohesive message with one author, one shepherd, God. God inspired all of the Bible to be written, right? And so this is trustworthy, and it can bear weight because it is His Word. We can trust it, and we can live by it. But beyond these, beyond Scripture, beyond God's Word, my son, be warned. There is no end to the making of many books, and much study wearies the body. Right? So it seems to be here that, man, the one most important book is God's Word. But beyond this, man, there's all kinds of books out there. There's even all kinds of Christian books, or books written by Christian authors. And, and they can be good books, right? And so I'm not saying not to read them, but at the end of the day, this is the main book you need to know. You need to weigh all of those against Scripture to make sure they're true. This is the only inspired book, right? So you want to be a great leader? Read the Bible. You want to be a great husband or wife? Read the Bible. Um, you want to learn how to, how to live well, how to serve well? Read the Bible. And the, read it over and over and over again. Sure, read some other books to understand how to interpret and stuff, but, but even that, you want to learn how to interpret the Bible? Read the Bible, <laughs> right? So if you read the New Testament, Jesus teaches us how to interpret the Old Testament. And the apostles teach us how to interpret the Old Testament. Right? And even when they were preaching their sermons and, and spreading the gospel throughout the world in the New Testament, they did it using the Old Testament. Right? And so ultimately, at the end of the day, live by God's word. Read his word. That's the main book that we need to be studying. And then it says, when all has been heard, the conclusion of the matter is this. This is the conclusion. All that he shared with us about his life, all that he's tried to, to learn and discern, right? This is, the, this is the conclusion of it. Fear God and keep his commands because this is for all humanity. And when it says fear here in the Hebrew, it's, it's not like be scared of God and tremble and stay away, right? It's it's a live in awe and reverence of God. Worship God. Submit to God. Right? Go to Him. Don't run away from Him. But fearfully. Understanding who He is. Understanding who we are. Live in awe and reverence of Him and obey Him. Right? Throughout Scripture it also tells us that if you truly love Him, for instance in 1 John, if you love Him, you obey Him. And so, in order to love him, we need to seek to obey him. And in seeking to obey him and understand him, we will love him more. Our affections will grow more for him. Our character will be grown. That is what we are to do. And this is, this is what is given to all humanity. All humanity. The call is fear God, obey him. And that, that's his intention for all of humanity. Because the, ultimately, if we fear him and obey him, we will be intimate with him. And that was his goal in creating us, for intimacy with him and each other. And then it ends with saying, For God will bring every act to judgment, including every hidden thing, whether good or evil. God knows he's in control. How you live this life matters. Respond to God. Persist in obeying God. And if you respond to God, also knowing that it is God that has allowed you to respond, it is God that is working in you, it's God that's working in you to help you abide. You can't do it on your own, right? So it's not like, this isn't a call to, you need to do these things to earn his, his love and, and earn that position, and, and, and you need to continue to do these things, otherwise you'll fall out of position. You know, that, that's not what Scripture says, right? The, throughout the whole Scripture, you know, it says that, that God knew you before you were born. He, he causes us to respond, and we are needing to take action and respond at the same time. Right? 
We are to persist and then persevere, and he enables us to persist and persevere. And so, man, just reading this, understanding that Solomon, in sharing his life, he's been very transparent about all of his misgivings, all that, that he has sought after and non, not found fulfillment in, where he's made his mistakes, and ultimately where his joy has come from. And then is, is sharing that, man, learn from my mistakes. Abide follow, persist, enjoy life as a gift from God. So that is that is our takeaway from the book of Ecclesiastes. Life is brief, it is precious, follow God and enjoy it. And that is where our eternal hope comes from. Thanks for joining me for reading through Ecclesiastes. And you know, I'd love it if you'd subscribe. If you have any comments or questions or suggestions for what we should read next, um, I'm going to be jumping into to Titus as well. So thanks for joining me. Have a great day.